Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Korean Star League. I'm Nathanius. We've got a little Terran versus Protoss action for you here today. In the top left, we have the red Protoss player. He is classic. He faces off against Dong Regu in the bottom right. The Korean Star League puts on uh, weekly online tournaments to help players make a couple extra bucks here and there over in the Korean StarCraft space, as well as provide a myriad of top quality pro matches for folks to watch. Of course, there is always something going on in StarCraft, but if you uh, get a chance to check them out on Patreon or Matcharino, the Korean Star League is, uh, is also largely crowdfunded, so helping to keep StarCraft going. Overlords coming out over to that natural. He's he's like, I got to take my hatchery a little almost too easily as classic messing with me. But Dong Regu, he's been a mainstay. Him and Classic have been playing in these a ton. And it's so it's always so fun to see them. Cause DRG, you never really know what's gonna happen. We've seen him play great macro games. We've seen him play great aggressive games. Historically, he is known for, for being a player that's a little bit here and there. He's one of the last guys that you'll see just doing something extremely boring or turtly or sitting back, you know. Nothing, uh, nothing too slow. Nothing too slow usually comes out of him as a result. So, what will Classic do? Protoss versus Zerg, very difficult matchup this year in general. I think there was a stat, something like Protoss players have won a single, I think a single PVZ and a single PVT all year in the round of eight or later. So they've they've definitely been struggling this year. I think we see a lot of that because you don't have, uh, you don't really have easily held thirds. You have a lot of angles that you can be attacked on most of these maps. So you, you do have to rely a little bit on trying to find that angle, get that edge, do something a little bit sneaky, or as some players uh, try to take things into their own hands, like Hero, who established his own Blink Stalker meta this year. Him and him and Max Packs doing everything they can to, to make Blink Stalkers solve all the problems with this pool. As Dong Regu takes his third, Probe's going to waltz away. And it is a Stargate opening from Classic. This is pretty standard. It is very normal to see the Protoss player open up with an Oracle. You can use that to deny mining. Sometimes you see the Stasis Ward in the Mineral Line to try and freeze the drones. And as always, if the drones themselves are exposed, then, then the Oracle gets to feast. So is Dong Regu going to make Spore Crawlers? Will we see him put together that, that bare minimum static defense? Or is he going to roll the dice on whether or not an Oracle is coming? The Overlord in the natural does not really see anything. He doesn't have that information. He's not going to, to send it in. He's not going to YOLO it in. There's nothing that could kill it. There's just two Adepts on the field. But it's usually a pretty safe assumption that Protoss players are going to open up with that. So that's kind of that's kind of what we're seeing. The Queen's just keeping that at bay. Now the first Oracle is done. It's going to immediately go across the map. Sometimes the Protoss player will wait until they have several Oracles specifically so that they don't have to worry about um, want, getting getting the kills because you can use, you know, the Oracles can two-shot uh, the drones. So, so you do want to try and get yourself into a spot where... Either the two oracles can work together, or, sorry about that, in this case, if you're going to be sending the oracles just in, just early one at a time, then it's just about getting that drone kill as fast as you can. The less drones you have, the more that each individual one makes up of your entire greater economy, blah, 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 math stuff, blah, 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 nerd, etc., etc. The spore crawlers are done, though. That's really the only thing that matters. There's not a spore in the main, but there are two queens. Typically, you don't, you can't really have enough queens to put two in every base at the beginning. If you make nothing other than queens, you can kind of get there. But as we've seen from DRG, while he does have a lot of queens, he doesn't really have anything else. There's no lair. There's no roach warren. There's no, there's nothing. There's just Zergling speed. That's that's actually all he has, just Ling speed and an evolution chamber that's about to finish. But that is literally all of the tech for DRG. There's there's nothing else here. So yes, he defends the oracles with a lot of queens. No, he doesn't really have his follow-up ready, but he may not be concerned about that. 
He could just take all these queens and push the creep out since he's gone up to seven of them. It is a plus one melee from the evolution chamber. So now that the lair is starting, now we can see a little bit more of where he wants to go with this. So lots of lings, get those upgrades, time it out, get to plus two with Baneling speed and then Baneling's one shot probes. That is that is the other nightmare for Protoss. Like how do you, how would you wall this base off, right? Hypothetically, it's like, how do you wall it off while, while being able to leave, you know? These, these bases uh, on this map pool are just incredibly exposed, so. That's one of the trickier things is holding those run buys and counter attacks. You don't really have tight choke points. You don't really have one way that your opponent can come from the outside into that. So tries to put up a stasis ward behind the mineral line, but the Queens are able to shut it down and classic. I, I got to compliment him. The Oracle situation looked a little dicey earlier, but he's not lost. He hasn't lost any of his oracles. I'm very impressed. He's only lost one unit for zero resources. I believe that is the stasis ward. I think legally, if you try to... It, ha it has something to do with... You guys know. It's like unrealized versus realized losses or gains. And technically, a stasis ward is like... You know, it's like a worthless contract that gains value only when it is exercised, so to speak. Finance bros will understand this one. But all you need to know is that it is completely worthless like most options so the fourth nexus is on the way for classic he's getting up Psy storm and that kind of says everything i love to see this that can definitely help with the large swaths of ling bane hydra it can be difficult to get the storm over the bane lings but i think that that's that's okay i've also said bane lings maybe 10 times in this game and there's still no bane ling nest it's actually just roaches we may we may be watching oops all roaches and then lurkers afterwards so hive is on the way lurker den is coming through the plus two melee and i thought he wanted the plus two quickly for the banes but it's just the links he just wants the map control these stalkers trying to get away are gonna struggle i think he should be able to get almost all of them too very low they do manage to get their blink cooldown in the nick of time to go back to the shield battery oracles will give chase against the roaches and he's gonna chase him gets the last one there on the outside so we have it's, it's it's a very low tech army that is that is drg in a nutshell he is set up to go into the big tech i think the lurker den finishing is gonna be probably the biggest factor for him get the lurker den together get the get the range upgrade get the burrow upgrade and then you typically just become a nightmare in the protoss's side so let's see as classic's going to continue to try to poke it's 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 just a couple it's just stalkers it's just stalkers it's hard to get excited about this army there's there's not a lot of there's not a lot from drg you i feel terrified looking at at all of those lings with that plus two about to finish though and I, I imagine the stalker is getting surrounded of course they can blink so I'm, I'm probably just being more cautious than i need to but i i love drg's setup he's he's just got so much map control the ability to just throw yourself at whatever army steps in the middle of the field is huge and it's just stalkers it's just stalkers and high templar six high templar behind the army a huge amount Yeah, we're kind of, we're commentating the Korean Star League number 24, which was played within the last, I think, uh, three or four days. It's at a time zone that I can't do live, so this is this is what you get. This is what you get. Look at this surround, though. This is kind of the stuff of nightmares. The storms on the wings, though. Whoa, okay, completely clears the south. Okay, okay, classic. I see you. Mass Stalker High Templar. All right, all right. Now, how do you deal with how do you deal with the lurkers? That's the big thing. Is he just gonna try and go back and forth and play for position, hope that it's like siege tanks and the lurkers are just in the wrong spot? That's not a bad way to play. I think blinking all the stalkers onto this would would be suicide, though. I don't know. I don't know. Is he gonna go for it? Is he going for it? Yeah, he does. What? He just blinks right on top. There's the storms, but. Uh, did you really think that was going to work? 
Oh lord. Oof. All but one. <laughs> I think all but one lurker live. Yeah. Well, blinking on the lurkers is uh is dangerous. Is dangerous. You know, I thought putting a max bet on a penny slot for five dollars. I thought that was aggressive, but this this takes the cake. So now the lurkers are gonna hit from the south. All the lings are gonna hit from the north. And what are you gonna do? He doesn't have the meat to push onto a bunch of lurkers. He just doesn't. That base, he's toast. This one, a lot of warp ins to try and defend it. But at the same time, it's still just a crazy amount of links. Here's here's the real question. Do we have adrenal? Yes, we do have adrenal. Okay. Adrenal glands is done. So the links on their own are now like the biggest nightmare. The patients blink. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like to, uh, yeah, you know, you know, that was a legendary moment. Let's say, let's say that that was, uh, that was pretty close to a patience level blink. I don't want to, I don't want to say it's on the level though, you know, because that original game, the original cast was also, I could never, I could never live up to, I could never live up to that man's, that man's legendary work. The immortals are all super dead. We've got plus three lings, well, plus two, plus three is almost done. We got plus two lings with adrenal. And a bunch of lurkers fully upgraded. And by fully upgraded, I mean they have range and burrow, which realistically is, is all they need. There is a Tempest, but it's not going to be enough. GG. Dong Regu takes game number one. To me, that just kind of makes sense. He, 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 had, he had everything rolling so well. He, he completely shut down the oracles. They did virtually nothing. And then I actually didn't think that it was that bad of a situation for classic but blinking blinking pure stalker into six lurkers he thought that they were exposed but your opponent has plus two links with adrenal like 500 of them they were not exposed <laughs> they're not they're not exposed absolutely not absolutely not all right in the top left we have the red Protoss player. He is classic. Currently down 0-1 against our blue Zerg player in the bottom right. He is DRG. Yeah, yeah, they blinked. They blinked. It looked like he almost blinked directly on top. But I think the biggest the biggest thing is when you have that many lurkers, even, even if you're directly on top of them rather than in front, I think that the splash from six intersecting lurker attacks is still too much. Like you have to you have to do that knowing you can survive one or two full volleys from those lurkers. Otherwise you because the stalkers just do less damage, right? So you obviously need them to be able to attack once or twice. But there was no universe where his stalkers were gonna have the time to focus down five lurkers. And of course, leaving them to just shoot automatically, they were killing the lings. They killed more Zerglings than they killed lurkers. And the, the lings came in after the blink. So, classic. Maybe he felt like he didn't have a lot of opportunities left in the game to, to try and get a good position. Maybe there was a little bit of despair, a little hopelessness. Or maybe he just rolled a natural one. I suppose that's, that's always possible. I suppose that's always possible. We're not, we're not perfect, right? We're just, we're just men. It does take that low ground hatch, though. Not have to worry about whether that the cannon rush is going to show up at his door. And now he gets to see that beautiful Protoss wall off. And there's there's nothing surprising to see here. It's pretty standard. This map, Dragon Scales, this has, again, you look at the third base. This is one of the most exposed third bases ever in StarCraft. There's like, you could, you could almost Xbox 360 degrees surround this one. So we see a lot of people make big pushes up onto this base. Usually it's the Zerg moving up here with a, you know, a Giga Concave. Spala, we'll see. We'll see if, if Classic's got any any tricks up his sleeve. He's got any tricks up his sleeve this time around. Stargate in the main base. Adept building in the natural. Well, it looks exactly like the build that he did in game one. So I guess we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait for something a little spicier than that. Maybe, maybe if he if he turns this one around and we go into a game three, maybe if he turns this one around and we get into a game three, then then we see him, you know, put put some uh, put some old bay old bay seasoning on it. 
What's a good European seasoning? How do I how do I make references that non-Americans will get? What's your guys' favorite seasoning? It's like Dutch mayonnaise or um hmm. On Sweden they like to catch up. Is that what we're gonna reach for? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. Ketchup's not always bad. With good hot fresh fries. I mean can't complain. Is it basic? Sure, sure. If we put ranch and barbecue sauce and buffalo sauce on everything, I don't I don't know. I don't know what they put on everything. Everything? Hmm. Maybe them not putting everything on it is uh is why they've got better waistlines than us. Yeah, that's probably the case, honestly. Void ray coming out. Instead of the Oracle opening. So this is a little bit more flexible in a way. You can deal with the overlord, the void ray can kill an infinite amount of, you know, roaches or lings in a hypothetical scenario where they those units just sit under the Void Ray. So it can give you a little bit more of a bulwark. But also the Overlord killing is, is usually what they do at the start of the game. Sometimes you see Protoss try to take a really fast third and then they use the Void Ray as that, you know, you don't have to worry about it running out of energy like the Oracles. So you can... It doesn't deal as much damage as the Oracle. It kills Zerglings much more slowly. But that's supposed to be the trade-off. So Ling's come up here. They're looking for this third base. But Classic, he's not taking that one. He wants to take this third. This one is still pretty open. It's on the low ground. There's a high ground near the pathway that you need to go through to get to this base. So Dragon Skills is a map where people get bullied a lot. People get people get bullied unbelievably hard here. You best you best believe I've got this one vetoed for that reason. You see this cliff? You want, you want to know what it's like to get Reaper cheesed on this map when you got this much space? Hell no. Nah. So Classic made an Oracle after the Void Ray. But I think the most interesting thing is his his real follow-up, the truth. This is like, if you, get, if you do all the side missions, then you get to find out about this before it's too late. But he's going for Adepts with Resonating Glaives. He's got four gateways. There's no pylon or anything out front. But he's been playing this close enough to the chest that I think it might kind of catch him off guard. There is a Roach Warren that's finishing right now. But is he going to make Roaches? Yes, seven of them. Okay, well, now I get a little bit more worried for the Adepts. Eight Roaches. You can just... Is he just going to keep pouring them out? Just keep piling on the Roaches? Is that his plan? Because Classic, he, he comes up. He's chasing the Lings with the Oracle. By the way, yes, you can make the destructible rocks give you vision. They don't really reveal anything around them. You can just see the rocks. You know, if you guys have ever... If you're like Hank Schrader of StarCraft. So he's got a lot of adepts. But like we said, there's a tremendous amount of roaches that have already been made. So what exactly is the angle here? The Ravagers are slightly more susceptible than the Zerglings are and the Roaches are. Well, maybe not as much as the Lings, but... Destructible Minerals? Yeah, that's the real question. Look, if we're already playing tournaments on fan patches, then why don't we rename the rocks? What could possibly... What's, what's the harm in that? We can cut the Colossus range by one. Can we... Can we change the names of the rocks? Can we change them to minerals? So the Adepts do come into the natural. They get a queen. They make their way to the main base. And it's kind of a dance. You're just bouncing between. Here's what's really crazy. The Oracle shows up. There's no Spore Crawler. And we're not in a situation anymore where those queens were able to all work together because they've just been running amok to deal with the Adepts, which are now once again back inside the natural. So he's killed eight drones. We have 57 probes to 38 drones. As far as the economy is concerned, Dong Regu, he's he's in he's in trouble. You know, my boy my boy decided to leverage his entire his entire profile into uh his entire portfolio into spy puts and he is he is not he's not doing well. He is not doing well at all. So it's time it's time to push it and he has to win with this attack right here right now. Classic does not have a huge army. He does have batteries coming up. The void ray, the safety void ray is still there. I wish he yeah, just send it out. Send the void ray out. Start start working on those Ravagers. Just take the Void Ray, click on the Ravager. Oh, the Queens are actually going to come with this too. Oh, that's brutal. That's brutal. 
the queen push. That completely shuts the void ray down. So he's going to step all the way back to the batteries, and it is a lot of Ravagers, a lot of Zerglings. The Biles are going to come down onto the batteries. First one pops. Number two, well, he overcharges the third one to try and distract, but that goes away as well. The batteries all being at the front when he's using an army that has to blink and retreat. It just makes it so difficult. He trades out a tremendous amount of his resources, but the army is still standing strong. He still has all of the stalkers. The Void Raid comes out to try and fight the Queens. They cannot use Transfuse off of Creep. And we have just got a bloodbath of a match here, ladies and gentlemen. Classic is going to hold. He basically said, look, you can drop all the Biles. You can drop everything that you want. Torch the place. But I'm going to keep the Stalkers alive. And once the Zerglings are dead, once the Zerglings are dead, then the Stalkers can kill the Ravagers. And somehow that Void Ray managed to make it through to the end of the fight as well. So bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Dr. Void Ray. Let's go to game. Let's go to game three. Let's go to game three, ladies and gentlemen. So Classic manages to hold the door. Love the resonating Glaive Adept play. Not relying as much on that third base, but basically saying... You have to out all in me now, or this third base will win me the game. Which is, that's a very gutsy, very, very gutsy call to make. It is not, it is not an easy one. It is not an easy one to make by any means whatsoever. So in the top left, tied up one apiece, we've got Classic. In the bottom right, the blue Zerg, we have DRG. We're playing on Babylon, We're playing on Babylon which has, I mean, this is one of the more defensible maps in the pool. You have an actual ramp into your natural that's not too big. There's not as much space to really do shenanigans around the main. There's a decent amount of air space though. And the third base, the third base is on a low ground. There's a cliff right next to it. So it's a perfect staging ground to shut this third down. So classic. When I talked about the open third base before, I wonder if he'll try to take this third instead and just play play the space between since that main base should be okay rather than extending himself too much around the triangle. A triangle base can be, uh, can be a real trap on this map. Real trapezoid. It's DRG, not really phased. He's able to take that hatchery on the third base. This, this is... A little bit more in line with what the average Zerg player is allowed to do in this matchup. You cannot always get away. You can't always get away with trying to force that natural. And the probe is still here being annoying. So you can't start the mining animation if there's another worker mining it. So that's why he just keeps starting and stopping the mining animation for the sole explicit purpose of denying a whole entire mineral patch to the opponent. And then the, then the drone looks for a different patch to go to. And you see some people try to counter micro it and it, it gets, it gets awkward and uncomfortable and ugly really, really fast. It's basically all you need to know. It's not really considered worth it since each individual mineral trip is only five in this game. But if you stop a drone five times, that's literally 25 minerals. I don't know. What would, what would you do with 25 minerals? Probably 10 piece nugget, Diet Coke, small fries on the side. Yeah, probably. Probably. If anything's left over, just add more nuggets. Warp gate begins on the cybernetic score. And with that, Stargate as well. Classic has gone Stargate all three games in this series. But the way that he's followed it up has not been completely identical. We had him try to go for something a little more straight up with the, the big the big stalker high Templar build in game one, which I think actually could have worked if he didn't blink all of his stalkers directly into the middle of six lurkers. Um, don't do that, by the way. Pro tip. Uh, but he it, okay so it's a void ray again the stargate's done but he's doing a void ray opening he's not going right into the oracle like game one there are a few overlords on the map now if you're a classic and you see overlord here overlord here and then overlord here to me i'm sorry i don't know about you guys i'm starting to see a line on the mini map of overlords so i'm wondering if drg is going to get a lair and maybe bring all of his queens and a bunch of lings across the map and I'm fantasizing about this purely off of his overlords watching very normal pathways that Protoss units would move through. So 
that's probably not going to happen at all. But that's where my brain went, so you get to hear it. He is going to follow it up with the Oracle, but he just likes having that Void Ray for defense. Oh, there you go. He's going to come out and microwave himself. Microwave himself some Overlords. There is another one outside of his base. I think he should be able to pop that one, too. This is why I like the Void Ray opening. The Void Ray doesn't really contribute much to your overall game plan. No, it just denies information from your opponent. But there is nothing more valuable in this game than information because if you have all of the information, then, you know, if you know what to do, then you should just do those things, right? But that, that, set, that feeling of uncertainty that plays into like ladder games, you know, that's, that's a big stressor for people. That's a big stressor for people. If you, were gonna, if you were gonna play against DRG in a tournament, you could look up his match history, you could watch his last, his last pro match before you play him or something. People on the ladder, they don't they don't have that luxury, so it's a little more it's a little more anxiety inducing. The DRG knows Classic likes to play that macro game, and oh my goodness, Classic. We talked about mixing it up. I feel like I'm advertising blenders now, because we are we are we're not just mixing it up, we are pureeing this down into a paste, into a fine liquid paste. In fact, it'll be so pure, we're going to have to recommend that you you only fill the glass halfway with it. You should be, the rest of the glass should be filled with purified and or distilled water. You can chill it if you want. It's really up to you. You know, some people like to drink all of their beverages on ice. I do not understand it. I do not understand it. You get brain freeze. It makes it so you don't want to drink it that fast because it's cold. And then you end up throwing most of it out because then the ice melts into it. And it reaches room temperature and you're like, well, I don't want to drink uh, watered down X. You know, and you're like, mm, that's what I mean. Take it without ice, drink it, be done with it, move on with your life, you know? Is that so crazy? Now, if it's 100 degrees outside, it's a little bit different, but the most efficient way to consume water is uh, barely below, barely below room temperature. And that still tastes cold. It still tastes cold, guys. DRG's lings are perusing the map, but he's he's like, what's happening? What's going on? Surprise, carriers! Ba -da 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 -da. I'm just rolling up with two big boys. There's no observers though, so I can't clear the creep. You can see me. That's that's this game. Can he really do anything about the carriers? No. Can the carriers really do anything about him? I don't know, not really about that either. Not really about that either. You burn more calories from drinking cold water. Mm. You gotta remember, I, I said drinking ice water so icy that you can't drink it all. That's my point. You get brain freeze. Have you ever tried to chug a drink with ice in it? It's about hydration. My hydration is prioritized over my comfort. I can accidentally drink half of an eight ounce glass, no problem. But if there's ice in it, I'm going a sip at a time or my brain turns into a popsicle. I bet you guys didn't expect me to preach about this during the cast, huh? Yeah, yeah, you dehydrated animals. Go have a glass of water right now. Do it. If you're watching the VOD, just pause it. These carriers aren't going anywhere. I <laughs> can't believe it's seven minutes. Seven minutes into the game, he's got four carriers on top of DRG's third base. The, the safety void ray's got 10 kills. He's just doing, trying to hold it down. Get those link, get those zealots over there. Is this really happening? Did he see? He just he just carry your rush DRG. Is it working? Oh wait, no. There's twelve corruptors on the way. Oh boy. Well, twelve corruptors will be very difficult. Twelve corruptors will be very difficult to deal with. He does have plus one about to finish, so I guess anything's possible. Does he have a recall? Is he waiting for a recall? I don't think he wants to use it, based on what we're seeing. Looks like he's gonna pull back. He's gonna pull back with the carriers. Just fly them home. I mean, recall's cooldown is about two minutes. It's a little over two minutes. So there's really no reason for him to use it unless he has to. I just wasn't sure if he was gonna try to trade his interceptors against the corruptors. But by leaving, as soon as the corruptors finish, he gives he gives DRG really no value for them. Since the carriers needed to come home anyway. He was able to secure his third base. 
I wish there was an easier way to wall this off. I don't know if the map maker was trolling, but there's like a one hex spot at the bottom of the ramp here that goes behind the simulator. But it's very, very, it's very tricky to try and block that completely from the bottom. It is just roaches. I mean, he could he could just kill all of those with the carriers right now. The corruptors are not here yet. They're they're still at home. But he's going to let him break the rocks. He's going to let him break the rocks. DRG has a lot of corruptors. We are at 19. 19 corruptors. So his game plan is to just shove everything he has up this ramp and brutally murder classic. That's his that's his game plan. He is going to he he's, he's just going to send it in in the the online hot takes clickbait reaction video uh, meta i believe this is called i believe this is called baiting he's he's ready or so because a full send full send of course if the corruptors kill all the carriers and the roaches and ravagers and the queens get onto the stalkers this should be pretty doable but there's size storm in the mix and i think that really complicates things Gets a huge one over the Corruptors, absolutely melting them down to orange HP in no time at all. Interceptor count takes a little bit of a dip, but he's still got 20 left. Stalkers will continue on the chase. See, most of the Interceptors, they did die to some friendly fire storm damage, but Classic is just giving a hot pursuit. I think he's worried about a, a remax or a big flux of corruptors as the stalkers are going to separate from the carriers and they do so everything else tries to make its way back towards that base one more time he's going to recall the stalkers but a decent chunk of them actually do not make it out they're running he's running okay four of them are saved manages to keep four stalkers alive all right this this game ended up delivering it's certainly not to giorno but it's something You love to see it. You love to see it. Lings, Lings can't even. There's so many of them. They can't even all attack those rocks at the same time. He's gotta. He's gonna have to split his army in half to to get that open. Meanwhile, classic dropping additional batteries. He's got a big setup here defensively. Can I just say one thing about this best of three that has confused me and bewildered me? And I don't mean it as any sort of negative thing, but there's been no bane links. Am I am I the only person who noticed that? No, no banelings, no baneling runbys, no baneling drops, no plus two baneling jokes, one shotting probes. Corruptors are gonna go pee on the main nexus while the army moves out into the middle of the field. That thing is gone, gone like a freight train, gone like yesterday. And there's just a single cannon and a stalker to defend the third base. So now Classic is just gonna push with everything, and I feel this is almost that point of no return where he he cannot really afford to go home with the shield on his back anymore. Corruptors are going to try and make a dive on the carriers. He gets uh, quite a few storms on them. Going for a storm on the roaches now. Corruptors are all dead, and that will do it. Classic takes the 2-1 to -one victory over DRG. Yo, shout out to the carrier rush, dog.